Could it be that this anime takes place in the countryside? In one of the most urbanized countries in the world, Nananbiori presents not just the nostalgia of rural life, but also a reflection of its present and even a redefinition of its future. These phases correspond to three aspects of the social background of the show, technology, economics, and demography. None of these points is spoken loudly, but I believe they can elaborate not just the themes of the show, but also its popularity. The use and disuse of technology imparts an impression of a bygone time. This is consistent with the explanation from the manga's creator Addo, that the setting is not a specific place, but rather collected from memories of childhood visits to their grandparents. When technology is used, it calls back to memories of using a payphone or catching a favorite cartoon when it comes on, mostly obsolete rituals in a world of widespread texting and streaming. These might correspond to discrete periods of time from our own histories. Even if you don't have such memories, the organization of the manga and anime around the changing of the seasons provides another form of nostalgia, a sense of universal timelessness. Holidays and other customs are celebrated as they have been for centuries. Beyond that, just about anybody can appreciate wading in a river during summer, walking through autumn foliage, or playing in the snow. It is reassuring to viewers who have grown beyond such carefree pastimes that each season will return, and that this fun is always possible. From this perspective, Nanan Biori establishes a familiar and romantic perception of rural Japan as being frozen in the past, a place where life can be taken slowly. Other aspects allude to rural life as it exists in modern society. Rural areas are not bustling sites of economic activity, and Nanan Biori does not try to avert this perception. For occupations represented, there is a school teacher, a candy store owner, and a rice farming family. Each of these is very respectable, but not exactly cutting edge. Hotaru's origin story from the very first episode adds an element of irony. Her family moved for her father's work, but we never hear what he actually does, perhaps because it's hard to think of a job that can only be done in such a small town. Furthermore, daily life for the main characters is punctuated by aspects that are both charming and challenging. An unintended produce stand indicates the community's ingenuity and trust, but also reflects that the everyday convenience and variety of supermarkets is unavailable to some. Going to the department store is an event, not an errand. Intermittent bus stops or the limited flow of information about the outside world can set up a good joke, but also reminds us that decreasing access to transportation and the isolation of rural communities is a real problem. Elements of these difficulties appear behind some of the characters' recurring and unresolved tensions. Kaede occasionally ponders her financial situation. Natsumi's poor school performance is a frequent concern of her mother, who wants her to have a foundation for a successful future. And Komari feels left out of conversations about popular music and fashion. She is unsure if she'll be able to become a mature, independent, and implicitly urban-dwelling adult woman. Even in this idyllic world, society affects the individual psyche. These topics are treated playfully, but in doing so, I think the show is a welcome reminder of different ways of life. So far, Nanan Biori has reinforced the prevailing view of the countryside. In the final respect, it completely reverses one of these views. The rapid aging of Japanese demographics is particularly pronounced in rural areas. And yet, while decades of low birth rates and high life expectancy result in an age distribution that looks like this, the characters in the show overwhelmingly skew young. Obviously, the primary focus is on a group of children, but even the adult characters are young or middle-aged. Mother Koshigaya, easily the oldest recurring character, is probably at most around 50 based on the ages of her children, in a country where the median age is in the upper 40s. There are elderly people shown, notably in the first episode, but they're only used to establish the setting and are rarely given speaking roles. I think this is a healthy perspective on rural areas that have been subject to a significant amount of doomsaying. It certainly does not relieve any pressure to constantly restate that small towns, and morbidly by implication their residents, are headed for extinction. The show seems to deliberately flip this by emphasizing a close-knit group of young people and the bonds that they form. Rural communities are not just a social quandary, but a real place filled with vitality and possibilities, to grow up, to enjoy nature, and to experience life. I think all of this helps explain the show's popularity. The problems outlined above exist in different degree or form all across Japan, and even across the world. Nan Nan Biori touches on some societal challenges faced by individuals through their everyday lives. But against this difficulty, in far greater abundance, it also offers memories of a cheerful yesterday, the fun to be had today, and hopes of a vibrant tomorrow. Thank you.